Hello beautiful people and welcome back to the Ascension Diaries channel. My name is Alexis and I'm here to share with you some space weather, in specific the Schumann Resonance, my specialty, and a few other interesting caveats and things that I'm going to add on to the report like I usually do. I did some grid working today. I'm going to show you the locations we actually went. It was super cool. I think you're really going to like it. But let's get into the Schumann Resonance. As you can see here, there were three pronounced blasts in the last 24 hours. This was the one I did the video about yesterday, so I haven't been gone very long. And there's also something weird that occurred, which I'm not surprised to see in a way, but it's a new one, at least to my memory, where around, you can see the number here, 36 hertz, this little Russian thing means hertz on this chart. I looked it up. <laughs> and around 36 hertz, I would say 37, there was very strange activity around 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the USA yesterday. So that was on the 9th. And then into the evening, around 10 o'clock p.m., there was a blast. And then around midnight and 1 o'clock, there was a blast. And then around 5 in the morning, there was a blast in the today for the 10th, December 10th. And this was obviously the most substantial one. And the day has moved on. And there hasn't been much activity since then. There's still a little bit of dotting here. This hangs out around 24 hertz. This has been a phenomenon I don't understand, but I have been watching for a while. Again, there's some activity here along the 8 hertz line. So that's around the 7.83 line constantly buzzing. So what does this mean? What is this information telling us? Well, we're going to look into it a little further um, because there are some clues going on. So first of all, let's look at what the amplitudes were behind each of those blasts. So as you can see, it went from zero hertz to 40 hertz, most of them. Most of this information blasted past the bottom of the chart, which is at 40 hertz, for those of you who don't know. But as you can see, they should probably extend the chart to maybe 60 hertz because they aren't capturing most of the information. And I don't know why, but if I was making the chart, I'd make it bigger. <laughs> so let's look. We had the blast yesterday hit an amplitude of 74. So the white line is considered the 7.83 hertz line. That's the primary, the fundamental, the fundamental frequency of the Schumann resonances. So it's the main one. That's what they say. So that hit a power of 74 yesterday. Then into the evening and the, the more early morning of today, it stayed around a 60, like it maxed out around 60, 60 in amplitude of 60. I almost said hertz. It's not hertz. Amplitude is either measured in microvolts or nanoteslas. And there's actually two different ways to measure the, the amplitude of frequencies, but they don't specify. As you can see here, there is no indication of what these numbers are actually, what unit these numbers are in, which is the biggest mystery of it all and what I end up arguing online about the most. But it's all for a good cause. So let's see, that power wasn't as powerful as the ninth, but still pretty good, very up there. Um, definitely, most of you probably popped open in the middle of the night, you know, woke up, had a disturbance. Um, the last blast was giving people nausea and headaches. This one could have done the same thing. I haven't actually gotten that information from the public because I've been busy today, but I'm going to work on that. But I wanted to give you this information as soon as possible. The frequencies during this time, as you can see here, usually you see how it ranges. These are all 7 point something. So this is the 7.83 line. It dips in between that average. During those blasts, it didn't seem like there's any significant shifts in the frequencies, nothing like obvious. So I'm going to skip that one today. The Q factor, which is the quality. Oh, it's having a, this should say Q factor. That's in Russian right now. The Q factor didn't seem to do anything too crazy, except for the, again, the yellow line rang out very purely during the 5 a.m. blast. And what does that mean? I don't know. It just means that that frequency, the yellow line, which hangs out around 14 hertz, was the purest. It rang out the most pure during that time, at least according to these charts. So I'm going to jump to a website that many of you actually use and talk about and know, which is called DisclosureNews.it. It's supposed to be an Italian website. This website was live and posting the Schumann Resonance pretty early, like one of the earlier sites that I ever saw. 
and they've expanded so much since then. I really want to get in contact with these people. I have a feeling they actually watch what I do and the work I do because it, sometimes I can tell these things. I might be wrong, but I would like to meet up with you. If you are making this site, I would love to have a conversation with you, interview you. I think it'd be really cool. We've got to bring this small niche community together. So they're reporting on the Schumann Resonance as well. So this is a website you could also use. And they talk about the amplitude being power. So this doesn't actually give you those numbers. This doesn't give you those numbers that they're grabbing. They're grabbing those numbers from this chart, which is the second chart I showed you. It's considered the amplitude chart. And again, as you can see, they mentioned that the power got up to a 67. So that's what they predicted or I guess saw that was the most powerful blast of the 7.83, the white line, and that's what they report. Again, it's good to mention that they say power and not hertz because this is the power behind the hertz. They also decidedly, I don't know when this happened, reported, because they'll do a little write-up, that this is the umpteenth coincidence 17, 17 and after this, it has been calm in the Schumann Resonance. So the hour that this last blast happened was around the 17th hour on the clock that this chart is measured in, which is in universal time or UTC minus 7. And they on this website, they actually put it into UTC underneath here. They've made their own addition to this chart. So you can read it better for those of you who are more... Uh, uh, acquainted with those ways of measuring time, they've made that easier for you in case you're wondering. But again, they have also been noticing the coincidence that the 17th hour seems to get a lot of attention in the Schumann Resonance. I've personally noticed it's the 16th hour, but when it gets to be the 17th, I start to beget, I start to open my eyes a little more because again, I'm watching the QAnon phenomena. Q is the 17th letter in the alphabet. There's a lot of synchronicities. And I put one in the show and the news that it happened again because they're increasing in synchronicity because I think the QAnon team is starting to want public to realize that they are working directly with the president and with the plan and uh, the great awakening that's happening. That's my theory. I know many of you may think differently, but I'm just genuinely sharing the patterns I'm noticing. Feel free to leave um, your opinion in the comments. Always be friendly, of course. I get nothing but friendly comments, so I'm not worried about it. You guys are awesome. And so there's that Italian site. Just wanted to let you know that they seem to be tracking similar phenomena that I am. And this is the heartmath.org site. Again, we can look at the numbers throughout the world. They measure, measure in multiple places in the world. And I don't know what, again, what units they're using. They also mention Schumann Resonance's power in this one. So everyone's dancing around the fact that they don't really have, they don't have units for what they are measuring to be power. On the side here, they say 0 0.32 to 36 hertz, which says power next to it. But again, these numbers, they don't have, they are not in between point. 36 and 36 so it's very interesting I don't understand this website I've been trying <laughs> but they measure power and they measure it around the world the power hasn't been that intense nothing crazy as you can see back here there is much bigger hypes and humps in the data in the past so right now nothing crazy nothing out of the ordinary but what is crazy and out of the ordinary is this and I want you to watch this side of the Sun the right hand side of the Sun very closely because it's happening right now as soon as I click play boom oh they're gonna do a close-up great 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 Wow look at that thing fantastic oh even closer <laughs> I love this <laughs> Okay. Oh, and there's some flooding because, of course, the sun does something crazy and somewhere else in the world is flooding or blowing up. The world is very responsive. And ironically, they say these things, they show these things, but here in the description it says a small CME, which is what you just saw is considered that ball that just shot out of the sun. It's considered a coronal mass ejection. And it was released off of the northwest limb due to destabilized a destabilized filament, which is a magnetic thing. And then it said it will miss Earth and that space weather is relatively calm. So very, 
funny how they say that these things are calm and everything's cool, even though all these things are going on in the world. And it happened today. This release that you're seeing, it happened. It looks today. And so this big thing, Earth is so small compared to this giant thing. And to say that we there's no effect and that's going to miss Earth is totally, in my opinion, not correct and not real science because we are connected an electromagnetically to the sun. So everything that it releases or it receives, it's also connected to us. We aren't just floating barely in range of this thing. We are deeply connected to this thing. It's like connected by a cord, like an umbilical cord in a lot of ways. At least that's the way I see it. That's the way the filaments of the brain connect. That's the way the universe kind of connects itself. So I don't agree that it's not affecting our planet. And we can look at the charts here too. You saw the Schumann resonance. Clearly there's something going on there. The charts here, the x-ray charts are being weird. There's overlapping colored lines here. It's strange. The solar wind did go up and have a bunch of jaggedy moments. And the polarity on the sun's surface flipped a couple times. And it didn't get higher. The solar wind speed didn't get very high, but it still jumped. It still went to about its average, a little over average. It's just the behavior of the lines that you really want to watch. Again, this is the the chart that shows the impact of our geomagnetic field. And when it gets buzzed really hard, these lines start turning yellow. They get up higher and they turn red. That's called a geomagnetic storm. So this giant thing popped off the sun. Doesn't seem like on these charts that there really was much in effect. The Schumann resonance showed up, showed us something. That is Earth's ionosphere being disturbed. So electrically disturbed by something. We don't know. And so that's the space weather. I don't have a lot of evidence, again, why the Schumann resonance did this. And it's going to keep doing weird things. And there isn't always a connection with all of the solar weather and the charts. This could be an earthbound energy that's happening that's buzzing around. The military has plenty of capacity to do that to our ionosphere. They have like harp and systems like that that just heat it up literally with electrical current. They just heat up the particles and it causes these sort of things, but I don't know why this is going on. And that's the space weather today. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you next about some grid working I did and some really cool locations I went to that I thought you might find interesting. And oh, no, that's a tax form. Don't want that one. <laughs> okay, so what we went to do today was going to Giant Rock. So this rock is about, I think, seven stories tall. It is, there's the people. You can see their little bodies. This giant piece of the rock actually popped off and a friend of ours who we went to see the rock with um, talked about there was a prophecy that she knew that a person knew that this was going to break and when it broke she was able to release and record all of this information and these downloads that she once received from, I'm pretty sure from an ET contact experience that she had because you can actually go underneath this rock. This rock used to have uh, a hollowed out area underneath. They've kind of filled it in where a person lived, multiple people lived. There used to be a cafe. This used to be a place where people would go for UFO conferences, like 11,000 people back in the 50s. I'm pretty sure it was. And yeah, back in the 30s, uh, they found the place. A German found the place. The, the natives already knew about it. The Native Americans already knew about it. They find this place. They, they're storing stuff down there. And then there was a man named Van Tassel that went there. And he was a firm believer in aliens. He was an air, he had an airplane. He made the place into a little airport, actually. And he had, he, he had many experiences under this rock. This rock is very interesting. He said that he met with a wise group of aliens known as the Council of Seven Lights, which I would refer to the seven stars and the Pleiades, the seven sisters, as a possible connection here. They said that this extra, this meeting with the extraterrestrials gave him ideas like Nikola Tesla did. And he got all these downloads and he wanted to build a device. He ended up building a device and it was called the Integratron. And it's supposed to be a, a rev, rejuvenation machine and even possibly a time machine. And so they had UFO conventions here. They had people continually go there Um to check it out really cool really giant rock we did go there i touched it all it was very cool i even climbed underneath it <laughs> and there was some stuff dug out but not the same as it was 
truly gigantic, incredible rock. But we also saw the Integratron, which is described as it has a, it's a one of a kind building, 38 foot high, 55 foot diameter. It is non-metallic and is now used as a sound chamber and sound healing, sound medicine sort of location. So this is what it looks like. Well, come on now. You're going to give me better pictures than that. Okay, so it looks like this giant dome. Okay, and you inside, it's all made out of wood. But I guess when the guy built it, Van Tassel, he died two weeks before it was supposed to be finished. And then the government went in there and took this giant coil out of it and a bunch of technology that was embedded in it basically stripped it and then later made fun of it because it didn't work it wasn't a time machine it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do it's been repurposed now benevolently to be a sound healing chamber which is great but i feel like we went there and we went to this place the guy actually lived under the rock for a while van tassel and had all these experiences built this thing had 11,000 people come to this rock for UFO conferences and stuff. And then he died right before he finished making it. Very, you know, synchronistically. Who knows what happened to the guy. But I think we went there to kind of bring light to it. I'm glad to share this with you. I want to know what you guys think about it. If you've been there, it's very beautiful. Would recommend. It's by Joshua Tree, California. And you can easily look it up. Here's the actual address for you you're interested but yeah that's the cool stuff it's also really close to a grid point this again on this grid point map this grid point right over here we're really close to this point uh geographically so it's very interesting this guy built the thing because he said a bunch of ley lines were crossing right on that building so these technologies have been built by a lot of people in the last hundred years and been busted and broken down they're constantly trying to build these things on earth and it's going to keep getting better it's going to keep getting easier and who knows the next integratron might already be built and operating and we're all going to find out about it soon and trump's been using it to keep him youthful like uh, it it wouldn't put you can't put it past me like it's very likely that something like that's going to happen but speaking of trump as another synchronicity today with the fisa court and everything that was happening yesterday, there were 17 instances of misconduct cited in the report. They are very bad. <laughs> so mistakes, 17 mistakes. So there's that 17 again. So the 17, all there's a ton of other things in the report, I guess, that really kind of points to that there's more going on here. And so just keep your eyes open. We're just going to keep watching for the 17s and the Qs and it all seems to be related, and I'm just the messenger here. And for those of you interested in supporting the channel, again, thank you very much for those of you who do. You can pledge however much you want by following the link in the description with this button, or you can choose some of the tiers that I have as offerings that I'm going to give you something in return for your support. But that otherwise, that's everything from me today. I love you all very much, and I'm grateful to see you here again. Thank you for liking, for subscribing. Again, the Facebook page just reached 8,000 likes. It's pretty awesome. This little niche about the Schumann Resonance is getting way more popular, and I'm really grateful for all of your help in doing so. So um, until next time, I will be seeing you. Be good and do good. Bye, everybody.